have water vapor, 5 megapascals, 320, and there's a turbine and then expands to 0.1 bar, okay? It's got a mass flow rate given, okay? And this turbine has an isentropic efficiency of 92%, okay? So what we're going to do, again, is we're going to find our states before and after the turbine. So as it enters, the pressure 1 is 5 megapascals, the temperature is 320 degrees Celsius, and it expands to P2 of 0 0.1 bar, okay? And then we have this isentropic efficiency, okay? So what I'm going to start with <clears throat> is I'm going to look up what's going on at state 1, and because it's fluid flow, I want to look up H, okay? And then to figure out this isentropic efficiency, I'm going to go ahead and look up the um, uh, entropy value. Okay, so this is for water, so I'll go to my water table. Okay, it's likely going to be steam, so we'll go to table A4. I'm going to go to 5 megapascals, which is this table. Well, it's halfway in between these two tables. Here's 4, and here's 6. So at 320, H is halfway in between these two values here, between uh, 2952 and... 3015, which I actually get then an H value of 2984, and I'll do the same thing with my S value. I'm halfway between um, 6.18 and 6.45, and I get 6.32 as my S value. So let me go ahead and jot those values down there. So H1 is 2984, and S1 is 6.32. Okay. So now what I do is, for an ideal turbine where my isentropic efficiency would be 100%, right, the best case uh, scenario here, my S value over here, which I'll call S2S, meaning isentropic or best case scenario, that would be 6.32. So now I, for the best case scenario, have a pressure and an entropy, and I can go look up H2S. This would be the enthalpy for the best case scenario of the turbine. That best case scenario is an isentropic scenario where there's uh, no change in entropy. Okay, so I'm going to go to point 0.1 bar. Okay, so I'm looking in, uh, this is table A3. This is the saturation table. Okay, and I go to was it point 0.1 bar. Okay, and my S value is 6.32, which you can see is in between these two values here. So I'm actually in the saturation thing here, okay? Exactly where? Well, I am the same amount if I'm 0.63 or 6.32 here, then I'm somewhere in between these two, which is uh, for the enthalpy, which gives me about 2,000. Uh, to be exact, it's 2,000.8 kilojoules per kilogram. So I'll let you go ahead and interpolate, again, knowing my entropy, what my enthalpy will be. Okay. And again, this is the best case scenario. So if that turbine is, com oops, is completely reversible, okay, I get 2,000.8 for my final H value. Okay. Of course, it's not. It's only 92% of the best case scenario. So that's where I'm going to use this equation. My isentropic uh, turbine efficiency is H1 minus H2 all over H1 minus H2S. Again, this is the best case, and this is my actual case. I'm 92% of the best case scenario. So what I do, again, is I just plug in 92%. I plug in what I know about H12984 minus H2, which is what I'm looking for. That's the actual H2, divided by 2984 minus the best case H2. And from that, I find that H2 actually equals 2079.5. So again, I can't get the best case scenario, I only get 92% of it. So I figure out the best case scenario and then figure out what would happen if I only got 92%. So instead of having this large delta H, H can't drop quite that far, 
going through that turbine because of that isentropic efficiency. Now, very simply, I can find the work of this guy just as the mass flow rate of H1 minus H2, which is going to be 2.52 times uh, 2984 minus 2079.5, which gives me the work of that to be 2279 kilowatts. So again, if you have these isentropic efficiencies, what you do is you figure out the best case scenario and then use that efficiency to find the actual situation that you're dealing with uh, in this problem.